Hi, I'm Dee, and welcome to Artsy Dee, all about art and creativity. Today, we're exploring coffee painting, and we'll be painting a daisy. We start off by sketching the basic daisy shape. If, you are, if you're not so confident with drawing, you can visit my website and download my free flower templates. Um, and you can trace these or you can transfer them onto, onto paper um, so that you don't have to worry about the, the uh, drawing it yourself. Um, you can, of course, just follow my step by step as I go along here. I'm drawing um, a daisy from a, the side angle. You can see I've drawn the center of the daisy and I'm slowly adding um, several petals onto the daisy's middle. You can see I work in, in just a very sketchy manner um, so that I can make corrections as I go along and I'm drawing very lightly with a soft 4B pencil so that it's easy to erase if necessary. Okay. Now we are going to draw a, a second stem with a little daisy flower bud um, to start balancing the composition. I'm going to add another leaf onto this and then add another soft um, stem in the background and I think I'll put some sort of soft bristle brush uh, type flower at the top. Another little leaf here on the side. Right, today I'm going to be um, outlining this, this drawing in a Faber-Castell pit pen. They are called the sepia range, it's a sepia color. And I'm using the, the, far, or the small um, nib size. Uh, it's not too big, so it doesn't feel clumsy, um, but you can still get a lot of detail, but it's also not too tiny, so that the, the lines are very visible as you're working. I'm using the sepia just to add in some fine details. I find this color works really well with coffee um, and even tea painting, in fact. Um, and what I'm going to do is just kind of identify the structure, go over the structure of uh, the pencil structure that I've already drawn, and then also um, add in shadows um, and some shading in various areas. So for now, I'm just working on the center part of the daisy as well as the petals. Adding some of that sepia around the outline of the petal just so we get a good idea of where the petals lie and where and how the daisy, uh, what the general structure of the daisy is. The sepia colour is lovely for creating a vintage type quality in your art. Right, let's speed this up a little bit. Now I'm going to just add some little small circles into the centre of the daisy to create um, a bit of texture and to add a shadow area and to give the effect of a three-dimensional um, daisy center. I'm 
Now I'm going to add lines onto the petals. This creates a bit of shading and also slight texture onto those petals. Okay, so our daisy is now complete, or the outline in sepia is complete, and we can start getting ready to paint with our coffee. So what I have here is uh, three plastic containers, and I'm just using just standard instant coffee, any instant coffee. I mean, they're going to have different colors, um, so you can test out what works well for you, but I'm just using this Nescafe standard instant coffee. And um, I'm going to put a teaspoon in my first little container. I've got a little bit of water in the second container and a little bit less water in the third container. So there's the first container with a bit of water. And I'm going to take a little bit of the coffee out, put it in that container, that second container, and stir it up, mix it up, so that we get a really nice uh, coffee color to our water. It's very much like watercolour paint, in fact, um, you can use coffee in a very similar manner to watercolour painting. So just mixing that up. Okay, that looks good. Right, let's put a little bit more of this coffee in our second container. There we go. This one will be a little bit lighter. So I like to sort of have three levels, three containers. Um, that's my lightest one. And now this will in fact be my most intense coffee color, the darkest co coffee color, which I'm mixing up here. You can see very, very um, concentrated in order to achieve a range, well, our darkest color, our darkest tone in our coffee range of colors. Oops, spilt a little bit on the page. I'll show you now how I remove that quite easily. Anyway, so there you see three variations. And what we're going to do first is we're going to paint a tonal, we're going to, we're going to paint a coffee tonal scale. Just to remove that little splash very easily with some paper towel. There we go. Right, now we're going to be painting our tonal scale just to get a sense of what our darks are and what our lights are and so that when we're painting our flower um, we know what our shadows will be and what our highlights will be. Right, so here is our darkest. This is our, this, I'm trying to get our darkest color here. Um, you can layer coffee so when you have painted a layer of coffee or when you've painted one wash of coffee you can allow that to dry once it's dry you can paint over it with a second layer um, you've got to be careful not to put too much fluid into that because it will run and um, it continues to bleed and run um, unlike watercolor which uh, the pigment is permanent it settles into the paper so this is a slightly different in that regard so you can see I'm painting various uh, tonal scales, or rather um, from dark to light here. And I'm getting to our lightest coffee colour that I'm happy with. Gives you a good idea. It's very good to do this because it gives you an idea of how you can, um, you know, of what you can expect with the, with the coffee that you've mixed. There we go, just lay it over that slightly to really see the darkness of the coffee there. Then I'm just going to, right here you can see on the left obviously the colours 
are darker, they move to the darker side, and on the right, they become lighter. Okay, and this is just a lovely uh, way to measure what tones to put where. Okay, so we can start painting our coffee paint now, um, painting our daisy. And I like to start off by identifying the shadow areas. So you're going to be adding shadow to the center of the daisy on the left hand side where we already had drawn um, the little dappled or stippled shadow. Shadows in the overlapped petals where the petals meet the center of the daisy and on the outside or the, the far outer edges of the petals. Now you can add a little bit of dappled coffee to um, that soft fluffy piece of grass behind the daisy and then paint in the stem. I try to paint one half of the stem um, with the coffee so it gives a sense of a shadow on the left hand side. We've always got to look at where our light hits and um, the light is really hitting the daisy on the right hand side. It's coming from the right hand side and so the shadow will fall on the left hand side opposite where the light hits. I'm going to add some shadow to our leaves. Here I am going over my shadow areas, um, just developing the depth of, of tone and shadow in those areas.
now we're filling in our flower bud, our daisy bud, um, leaving some areas white for the highlights. Okay, so let's look at creating a background. There's various ways you can you can paint a coffee background um, when you've done when you've created your own um, coffee painting. Today I've decided to add kind of a splashed effect, but it's it's not true splashing because I'm going to be painting. You can see I'm painting the dots onto the background, just little water droplets that I'm adding. I really love this effect because it it makes um, it it gives one the sense that there's living creatures around the daisy or around the plant um, it, it gives a sort of energy to it and um, you might imagine a little fly um, or a butterfly or a little bee close to the daisy um, so I'm just adding a very simple almost flat like effect putting little dots of coffee around the daisy There we go. So now what I'll do is I'll just take a paper towel and gently dab the very wet places so that, so that it dries without running. And I'll go over some final details on the daisy. If you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please subscribe. Um, I'll definitely be posting something once a week and would love you to be following along.